Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. This morning, I woke up thinking about the last five minutes of Joffrey Reggio's 1982 film, Kayani Scotsi. It's scored by Philip Glass. And if you haven't seen the film, watch the whole thing. If you have seen the film, go back and take a look at the last five minutes. The closing of the film, it depicts the launch of a rocket and the rocket's explosion and its descent. We never really actually see it land. Glass has underscored it with a beautiful example of a figured arpeggio. It's a special kind of arpeggio. I want to take a look at the way Philip Glass uses arpeggios. <laughs> Chords can be expressed in, I think, of three ways. The first one is super easy. It's a called a block chord. I play the chord and just kind of like hang on to all the notes. And then there's the option of uh, the alternating bass, or just I think of it as alternating, which creates a great rhythm. And of course, pianists use it all the time. Guitarists thumb chord, thumb chord, right? Now, the last idea is the arpeggio, one note at a time. And I'm just going up and down. When you just kind of go up and down the chord, that's a simple arpeggio. And if you have an arpeggiator built into a keyboard or maybe a MIDI plugin that arpeggiates, that's what it's gonna do. And I think the earliest examples of arpeggios in Glass's music are like that. Here's a, a piece called Mad Rush. This is page two. Let's look, let's look at measure 29 right there. So the right hand goes. While the left hand, um, And he just changes the chord. The right hand changes to this. And the left hand changes chord. Not a figured arpeggio, just out and in and out and in. In fact, Glass used that technique in his earliest glass ensemble works. And I think part of it has to do with this. The instrument that he most frequently would use it was this uh, kind of like old-fashioned organ. He used Farfisa organs, Hammond organs. Here I've, I've, I'm using a Vermona sample, which sounds a little bit like a Farfisa. This is what I was doing in the left hand. This is what I was doing in the right hand. Just a different version of the chord starting on a different note together. Now I can be, I can get pretty fast since it's not touch sensitive. I don't have to worry about how hard I hit things. And I think that a lot of that fast arpeggio stuff in the early glass pieces comes directly out of um, the fact that we're playing a non-touch sensitive instrument. Well, for me, the Kayani Scotsi theme, what he uses in Kayani Scotsi um, is an organ as well, only it is just crazy more beautiful. And also he uses this thing that I call, I don't know if this is a really good term for it, I call a figured arpeggio. So to, to really understand what a figured arpeggio is, look at the top line here. There are added notes to the chord. It's a D minor chord, but the G is added. And as the chords change, it changes a little bit. And then this moment right here is what I call a figuration here. This is what the organ does those last five minutes. Here's the figure. So beautiful. Of course, the second thing that Glass is great at is counterpoint. He studied in France with Nadia Boulanger, probably the greatest counterpoint teacher of the 20th century. And you can see right here this beautiful ascending line. 
as the right-hand figure descends is... It just kills, right? Well, it goes on, it repeats. Basically, it goes from a D minor version to a C, to a version of G, and then this A with the figure. And now the bass drops in. Just doubling the bass. I had to transcribe this. I couldn't find a, a chart for it anywhere. Well worth it, though. And here, the bass. F, E, D, A, D. And that moment right there where the ascent, D, E, F, G, goes against the F, E, D, A. Where are you? There we go. Um, it is beautiful counterpoint, contrary motion as the figure on top goes. It is so satisfying. You know, deceptively simple because the experience of it is so rich. If you're like me, you can't help but think about Hans Zimmer's score to Interstellar when you hear this. This is from 1982. Okay, last thing to look at. Glass, of course, has scored many movies. And one of my favorite scores of his is um, the score to The Hours. Well, since we've been talking so much about modal exchange, I thought I'd taken advantage uh, of that. And this is the last thing we'll look at. But check this out. So Glass starts his, um, there's one of his pieces tearing uh, herself away. It goes like this. And then modal exchange. And then, you know, that is basically how it works for the whole piece. So let's look at, at what happened there. Uh, the piece begins with um, this gorgeous uh, kind of like uh, X-Files arpeggio, where in A minor. And then right here at this moment, the A becomes A flat and the E becomes E flat. We've just changed spellings of those two notes. That's all we've done. And yet we get this effect. We're now in, we can't really tell. Are we in A flat major? Are we in um, D flat major? Are we in E flat major? We can't tell. We only have four notes. But in any case, that shift, so beautiful. It's modal exchange. And it happens several times in the course of this piece, although he does pick up and move to other key centers. Well, Glass is an example of a composer who used straightforward arpeggios, just the kind that you'll find on your, um, your arpeggiator, uh, your, either it's hardware or a plug-in, and also figured arpeggios. In Mad Rush, he uses the same metrical length again and again, and then one measure he'll clip uh, a couple of beats off the end just to give you this like feeling of tumbling, like you're tripping when you're rushing, which is kind of brilliant. You can use it in art music. Don't try doing it on the dance floor. People will kill you. Arpeggios and figured arpeggios coupled with great counterpoint and maybe a little bit of modal exchange. Thank you. It's heavenly music. Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. I'll see you next time.